Riding in heavy rain is something that almost all of us have got to do at some point. But there are a few quick tips that you can use to make the whole experience a lot less unpleasant. And most of this starts before you even actually get on your bike. Preparation is the key for your clothing, your bike, and also where you ride. Now, I think it's almost impossible to stay completely dry when riding in the rain, but there are a few key pieces that I use every time I go out in the wet, whether it's warm rain or cold rain. Now, first of all, a jacket. You have to weigh up the pros and cons of whether the sweat buildup inside a jacket is actually worth it from staying dry from the outside. In a lot of situations, a soft shell might be better. Now, this is less water resistant, but a lot more breathable. Now, for me personally, I think that it is, and I think one look at the pro peloton on wet days also suggests that that's the case as well. Secondly, waterproof overshoes. Now you can get really thin ones, so you don't have to use chunky neoprene ones all the time. But my pro tip is to get thin waterproof overshoes and then also thin neoprene ones as well. So you can layer these almost as if you would clothing on any other part of your body. Thirdly, the roadie cap. Now in this age of helmets, it only really comes into its own on wet days, where it serves a dual role. Firstly, keeping some of the water out of your eyes and then also providing a little bit of extra insulation for your head and keeping you warm. Now finally, with wet weather often comes poor visibility. So although black cycling kit is pretty trendy, so too is fluoro kit nowadays. So it's worth thinking about this so you really actually stand out when you're riding your bike. Now your clothing sorted, what about your bike? The first thing to contend with with wet weather is the reduced grip on the roads. So to combat this, you can reduce your tyre pressures, 10 to 20 psi, which increases the contact patch of the tyre and should give you more grip. You also need to think about the lubricant that you're going to put on your chain. So a thick wet weather lubricant is much more resistant to moisture and so it's going to last longer. There's nothing worse than a dry chain after a heavy downpour. It's potentially one of the most soul sappy experiences on a bike. If you're going to be riding in wet weather a lot, it's actually worth considering buying some mud guards. Now our favourites are the Crud Road Racer Mark IIs. Now, they can fit on just about any bike, so you don't need a specific frame with extra bosses. They actually don't look that bad either, but most of all, they give you the most amazing protection from wet weather. If you've never tried a set of mud guards before, I suggest you do. Now you can actually help yourself a great deal by thinking more about where you ride. As one of the biggest problems of wet weather is getting cold, I tend to avoid big climbs. Now because big climbs also mean big descents, and at this point where you're not really producing much effort, but that the wind chill is higher, you can really freeze. And some of my darkest moments on road bikes have come in precisely these situations. If time on the bike is important to you, so for example, you're training for something specific and you need to do a certain amount of hours, I've often found that doing loops closer to home really helps me stay out on the bike longer in foul conditions. Now, I don't know quite why this is, but knowing that I can get home quickly if the weather turns bad often makes me stay out and hold out for longer. The final bit of preparation is chamois cream. Now most of us probably don't need to use this much, if at all, but on wet days when you're going to be spending a long time in the saddle, it's worth considering. This is because your skin gets much more susceptible to chafing when it's wet, so spending a long time in the bike could well lead to some pretty painful experiences. So the best thing to do is to put it on before you set off, before any kind of chafing sets in. Finally, now we're out on our bikes. Bear in mind that wet bikes and wet roads make braking and cornering more hazardous. This is partly due to less grip and partly due to the inefficiencies of wet rim brakes. Now we've covered both of these topics at length in their own videos, so you can click on these to see all our pro tips. So here's how to slow down as fast as possible when it's raining. First and foremost, we know that slowing down will take longer. So give yourself more room to do it. Give yourself more space when approaching road junction 